Hey everyone, Itay Manero here, and in this video I'm going to show you how to paint a city landscape with a loose watercolor technique in Procreate. So let's jump right into it. In order to achieve this, I'm going to be using the watercolor experience brush set for Procreate. You can find it along with a free mini version for you to try out on my Gumroad page through the link in the top right corner of this video or in the description below. I'm also going to be using this fantastic photo reference by Luke Stackpool. I will leave the link in the description as well in case you want to follow along. Before I start my painting, I'm going to import a couple of textures from the ones that are included with this set. The first one is going to be a watercolor paper texture. This layer needs to stay all the time on top of everything else, and the layer mode needs to be set to multiply. For the second texture, I will add a watercolor wash sheet right below the paper texture, and I will set this layer to overlay mode. Below these two layers is where any of my painting layers are going to be. The first brush I'm going to use is called Bleeding Pen. This brush will allow me to do a very loose and stylistic line art of the main focal elements in this piece. I don't want to draw everything, just the few cars and a couple of pedestrians that I can observe in the photo reference. Everything else, I will paint it directly with watercolors. Notice how I'm not even doing a previous sketch or anything, I'm drawing my final lines directly. I don't even use and do that much. I want the line art to be as loose and spontaneous as possible because it will fit the loose watercolor technique perfectly. I'm also keeping things pretty simple without too much detailing. When I was happy with my drawing, I switched to another brush called Thick Splats. You'll see how awesome and versatile this brush is because I'm going to be using it for the most part of the painting. I started by painting the buildings in the far distance. What I love about this brush is how rough and loose the edges can look. A little trick that you are going to see me use a lot in this painting is to select the outside of a shape I've painted, add a little bit of feather, duplicate that part, and then set the new layer to multiply mode. This will create a stronger dark edge effect that will make the digital watercolor look even more realistic. For that reason, every time I paint a new row of buildings, I'm doing it on a new layer on top of the previous one. And this way I can apply the dark edge effect to each part separately. Having the color wheel always visible is super helpful, because it allows me to constantly make subtle color variations for a richer effect. Notice how I'm painting each new layer of buildings slightly darker than the previous one. This will help to add depth to our scene and make the buildings look more present as they get closer to us. By making the same brush smaller, I can get a little more precise with adding some very simple details to the closer buildings, like windows and so on. As you can see, I'm not covering the whole surface of the canvas, I'm leaving a fair amount of white, because I want the paper texture to show through and breathe. And I also want to leave some white around the edges of the canvas, so it will act as a frame for the painting. Now I'm painting the road, and again I'm leaving some white space near the bottom. I'm also saving the whites for the reflections of the sky in the center of the road. Notice how I painted a lot of different colors in the road. This helps to create the illusion that it is a rainy day, and therefore the road is wet, and it's reflecting a lot of colors and lights from the environment. On top of this, I'm adding the shadows under the different cars, and the couple of pedestrians. I didn't mention it before, but any time I needed to blend between some of the colors I switched to the smudge tool with the same brush, and it works just great for the task. Here I painted a white area on a new layer, where the crosswalk is going to be, and it looks just like if I had previously saved the white of the paper, like you would do with real watercolors. 
that's the beauty of digital watercolors. You can always go back and add something like this, which would be impossible with the real media. Using the eraser tool, I defined the separations in the crosswalk and then proceeded to darken the edges of the road around the crosswalk with the method I explained earlier. On the layer where the road is painted, I painted the reflections of the lights from the vehicles and this added this super nice colorful touch to the scene. I also painted some extra reflections and these few horizontal rough lines for texture. It is now time to paint all the main elements in the painting. For that, I'm duplicating my drawing layer just so that I have a backup copy just in case and then I'm going to paint directly in the same layer where my line art is. I like to do this, because as I paint, the watercolor makes the lines bleed a little bit here and there, adding that extra touch of realism for the watercolor effect. I slowly painted all the elements, without worrying too much on them to look perfect. I was really going for that super cool loose style. I should have done this before, but I stopped for a moment and decided to alpha lock the line art layer and colorize some of the lines to make them blend more nicely with the rest of the painting. Then I unlocked the alpha and continued painting. Here I painted the city lights. And also added a few extra details in the building in the right. I also painted the main pedestrian with the umbrella and reinforced the shadow underneath. A nice touch I like to add to my watercolor paintings is to use the bleeding pen brush on a new layer on top of the paper texture to add a few details using white. And this looks just like if you were using a white gel pen on paper, so again we're adding another layer of realism to our digital watercolor painting. Now for the final touches, I used a couple of different splatter brushes to add a few random watercolor drops here and there. The last thing I did was to import a couple of watercolor stamps from the ones that are included with this set, and I integrated them in a couple of places in my painting where I thought they would look nice, simply by playing with the hue saturation and brightness settings and setting it to multiply mode. And this is the final result. I really hope you liked this video. If you use my brushes and post your art on social media, feel free to use the hashtag Manero Brushes so that I can see what you create. I will be extremely happy to share your creations with my audience. Don't forget to subscribe for more art related videos and give me a thumbs up. Also, make sure to check out my Gumroad page where you will find the watercolor experience brush set for Procreate and many other sets that I have available. I'm sure something will suit your artistic needs. All the links are in the description below. Okay, thank you for watching. See you next time.